فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم فصل في الجمع بين السور في ركعة لا بأس بالجمع بين السور في ركعة واحد واحدة لا بأس بالجمع بين السور في ركعة واحدة فقد ثبت في الصحيحين من حديث عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال لقد عرفت النظائر التي كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقرن بينهن يقرن بينهن فذكر عشرين سورة من المفصل كل سورتين في ركعة وقد قدمنا عن جماعة من السلف قراءة الختمة في ركعة So now the author talks about a, a point called Can you recite more than one surah in a rak'ah? Can you? Are you allowed to? The author says, Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah, he says, La ba'sa, there is no harm. Bil jam'i to combine bayna suwarin fi rak'atin wahidatin to combine between two rak'ah, two units. Fi rak'atin wahida in one rak'ah. Faqad tabata fi sahihayni as it's transmitted in Bukhari and Muslim. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na'am. And the proof of this comes from a hadith rated in both Al-Bukhari and Muslim from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who said, I indeed know the chapters which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to combine in one rak'ah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, I know لَقَدْ عَرَفْتُ النَّظَائِرَ الَّتِي كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَقْرِنُ بَيْنَهُنَّ أَمَا يَقْرُنُ بَيْنَهُنَّ I know the chapters in which the Prophet ﷺ, he used to uh, combine between uh, in one rak'ah. I know them. He then mentioned 20 chapters from the Mufassal, explaining that every two chapters were recited in one rak'ah. We have already mentioned that some of the pious predecessors would complete the entire Qur'an in a single rak'ah. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he explains how the Prophet sallallahu used to do it. And he mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yaqrin nadairu suratayni fi raqa'a, al-Rahman and al-Najm, he used to combine them in one raqa'a. Wa qtarabati sa'a and haqa in one raqa'a. Al-Tur and dhariyat in one raqa'a. Ida waqa'ati al-waqi'a al-Noon in one raqa'a. Sa'ala sa'ilun al-Nazi'at in one raqa'a. ويل للمطففين أن عبس إن ون ركعة المدثر المزمل إن ون ركعة هل أتى على الإنسان أن لا أقسم بيوم القيامة إن ون ركعة عما يتساءلون أن سورة المرسلات إن ون ركعة الدخان أن إذا الشمس كويرت إن ون ركعة That's how the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to do it The author then says, فصل في الجهر والإصرار بالقراءة في الصلاة أجمع المسلمون على استحباب الجهر بالقراءة في صلاة الصبح والجمعة والعيدين وأوليين من المغرب والعشاء وفي الصلاة التراويح والوتر عقبها وهذا مستحب للإمام والمنفرد بما ينفرد به منها وأما المأمون فلا يجهر بالإجماع ويسن الجار في صلاة كسوف القمر ولا يجار في كسوف الشمس ويجار في الاستسقاء ولا يجار في الجنازة ولا يجار في الجنازة ولا يجار في الجنازة إذا صليت بالنهار وهذا بالليل على المذهب الصحيح المختار ولا يجار في نوافل النار غير غير ما ذكرناه من العيدين والاستسقاء واختلف أصحابنا في نوافل الليل فلا ظهر أنه لا يجهر والثاني يجار والثالث وهو اختيار البغوي يقرأ بين الجهر والإصرار ولو فاتته صلاة بالليل فقضاها بالنهار أو بالنهار فقضاها بالليل 
فهل يعتبر في الجهر والإسرار وقت الفوات أم وقت القضاء فيه وجهان لأصحابنا أظهرهما الاعتبار بوقت القضاء ولو جهر في موضع الإسرار أو أسر في موضع الجهر فصلاته صحيحة ولكن, ارتبك ولكن ارتكب المكروه ويسجد للسهو وعلم أن الإسرار في القراءة والتكبيرات وغيرهما من الأذكار هو أن يقوله بحيث يسمع نفسه ولا بد من نطقه بحيث يسمع نفسه إذا كان صحيح السمع ولا عارض له فإن لم يسمع لم تصح قراءته ولا غيرها من الأذكار بلا خلاف Section. Muslims have agreed that it is recommended to recite aloud during dawn prayers, Friday prayers, the two Eid prayers, the first two Raka'as of Maghrib and Isha prayers, the Tarawih prayers, and the Witter prayers after the Tarawih prayers. All of the Muslims have agreed that it's recommended to read loudly in recitation in all of those places. Salat al-Subh, you read it loud. Jum'ah, you read it loud. Eidayn, Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr, you read it loud. The two first rak'ahs of Maghrib and Isha, Salat al-Taraweeh and Al-Witr, all of those, the person reads it loud. The above is recommended for both the Imam and those praying alone. So it's recommended for the Imam, imam and it's also recommended for the one who is praying alone. Those praying behind the Imam, however, are not to recite aloud according to the consensus of the scholars. So the Imam is reading loud, the rest are listening. They're not, they're not allowed to read loud. No. It is also so not to recite aloud during the Kusuf prayers. The Kusuf is the eclipse, the eclipse of the moon. And during Istisqa prayers. Istisqa is when you're asking Allah for rain. It is not the sunnah to recite aloud during the funeral prayers, whether they are held during the night or during the day, according to the correct and chosen opinion. So the janazah, when it's prayed, no one reads it loud. Everyone's quiet. He reads it, sorry, everyone reads it, reads it low. No jahriya. There's no reading it loud. La imam wa la al Not the imam, nor the one who's been led by the imam. And this is the, uh, he says, al madhab is sahih al-mukhtar, naam. Apart from the read and istisfar prayers already mentioned, it is not recommended that one recite aloud while in a non-obligatory prayer during the day. Shafi'i scholars have disagreed with regards to reciting aloud during non-obligatory prayers prayed at night. One opinion regarding this matter is that recitation should not be said aloud, and this seems the most correct view. A second opinion is that it, is, it, is that it should be said aloud. And a third opinion suggests that recitation ought to be between being allowed and being whispered, this last being the opinion of Imam al-Baghul. Yeah, so there's three opinions regarding if a person wants to play, pray a voluntary prayer at night time. There are three opinions in the Madhab al-Shafi'i. Adhar, which is anna la, yah- la yajhar. What's apparent is that he shouldn't. He shouldn't read loud. The second is that he read, reads loud. And the third which is and it's the choice taken by an Imam, an Imam Al Baghawi, his name is Husayn ibn Mas'ud Al Baghawi. He's that, Yaqra'u bayna al Jahri wal Israr. He doesn't read too loud, nor does he read too low. There's a stage in between. Now. Question If a person misses a day prayer and wants to make it up by night, is whether or. Now, what does he say? If a person. If a person misses a day prayer. No, that's wrong. That's a wrong translation. What does it say in English? What does it say in Arabic? Huh? Walau fatatu fa salatu bilayl. If he misses a night prayer, right? And what does it say in the translation? If a person misses a day prayer and wants to make it up by night, that's the opposite. In brackets, he wrote all the opposite. I don't know if you. But either way, he still changed it. Oh, Well, he translation wise, he should bring the first one first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. If a person misses a day prayer and wants to make it up by night, or the opposite, is whether or not he recites aloud, determined by the original time of the prayer, or the time the prayer is being made up? So here there's a question. For example, I missed reciting at night Qiyamul Layl. Can you read loud at Qiyamul Layl? Let's can read his recitation a bit loud if he wishes to. Now I want to pay it back at daytime, I missed it. Am I allowed to bring it back at daytime? You're allowed to. You're allowed to bring it at daytime. Do I read it loud now or do I have to read it low now? 
So are you going to observe what time that this salah used to be prayed? Or you're going to now just look at, or you're going to look at the time that you're praying right now? Which of the two do you do? That's the question here. Shafi'i scholars have two opinions regarding this issue. The more likely of which is that it is, de that it is determined by the time the prayer is being made up. So the person needs to observe the time that they are praying it back, not when, when they miss that prayer. Naam. Not, not, not when the prayer was. You're not going to look at that. You're going to look at the time that you're paying it back now. Nonetheless, should one adhere to the opposing opinion, his prayer is still valid and he will have committed that which is disliked. A person in this situation should not make sujood the sakh. So if the person takes the opposite opinion, his salah is correct. But he's taken a disliked position and he doesn't have to come with sujood the sahwi. Mm -hmm. It is important to understand that to whisper during recitation and azkar means that the reciter should only raise his voice to the extent that he can hear himself barring deafness. This is the lowest possible voice at which, it is, at which it is acceptable to recite. Otherwise, the recitation is invalid according to the consensus of the scholars. Some people's recitation when they are reading, they don't move their tongue, nor do they move their lips. Nor can they even hear what they are saying. So they're, they're in the salah like this, and their lip is like this in their mouth. So you say to them, you, did you read Quran? They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm reading in my brain. That's not recitation. So they say, well, Buddha bin nutqihi. Your person has to utter. He has to say. He has to read to an extent, that you can make yourself hear it. You need to hear your recitation. You have to. But that's if your person whose hearing is good. If your hearing is a bit slow and you can't hear very good, then don't, don't read a bit, don't read too loud and say that I am making myself hear it. And if you don't read to an extent where you can't hear it, pay attention to this. Okay? Um, and your hearing is good and so you don't read it to that extent. Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah he says, فلا تس, فلا ت, لم تصح صلاته, قراءته. Your qira'a is not accepted. And your adhkar is not accepted. Because the adhkar is also the same. Allah Akbar. Sami Allah wa liman hamidah. Rabbana wa lakal hamdah. Hamdah kathir wa tayyib wa mubarakan fih. Wa nafis sami wa minu ma'ad 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 wa You have to make it yourself here that. You're in your ruku' you say, Subhu Qudus Rabbul Malaikat wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make yourself hear it. Are you with me, brothers? Like you're in ruku, you're like. Sami Allah ibn Hamidah. And you go to, like, you don't even say Allahu Akbar. You don't say anything. Your tongue doesn't move, your lip doesn't move, nothing. Then that, what you have to do is, what you have to understand is that that's not recitation. It's not considered as a recitation. Bila khilaf, without any dispute. This is, this is ijma' of the ulama. Faslun fi sakatat al-imam fi al-salat al-jahriya. Qala ashabuna yustahabu lil-imam fi al-salat al-jahriya an yaskut arba' sakatat fi hal al-qiyam. Ihdaha ba'd takbirat al-ihram liyaqra'a du'a al-tawajjuh wa liyuhrim al-ma'mun. والثانية عقب الفاتحة سكتة لطيفة جدا بين آخر الفاتحة وبين آمين لألا يتوهم أن آمين من الفاتحة والثالثة بعد آمين سكتة طويلة بحيث يقرأ المأمون الفاتحة والرابعة بعد الفراغ من السورة يفصل ما بها بين القراءة وبين تكبيرة الهويل إلى الركوع وبين تكبيرة الهوي إلى الركوع الهوي إلى الركوع. Section. Our companions have stated that it is recommended that the Imam make four pauses while standing. The first pause comes after the Tafbiratul Ihram so that the opening supplication can be made 
and so that those being led in prayer may also make their takbir. The author here, rahimahullah, he talks about the times when the Imam who is leading the prayer in the prayer where the recitation is read loud, four times he needs to be quiet, the Imam has to be quiet, four times. So he mentions, um, قال أصحابنا الشافعية سيستحب للإمام في الصلاة that is recommended for the Imam في الصلاة الجهرية in the Salah where he's reciting loud أن يسكت أربع سكتات في حال القيام four times he should be silent when reciting the Quran when, when, when reading so the first one is بعد تكبيرة الإحرام ليقرأ دعاء التوجه وليحرم وليحرم المأمومون the first one is that quiet Allahu Akbar you're silent for a little bit and this is based in the hadith which is in Sahihain min hadith Abi Hurairah this is based upon the hadith which is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira, which Abu Huraira said كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا كبر في الصلاة سكته نيئة قبل أن يقرأ that the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he was one that if he said Allahu Akbar if he said Allahu Akbar in the prayer سكت he would be silent هنيئة a very short period of time before he done any recitation so that's the first one uh, yeah, there's evidence for that one uh, yeah. The second cause is a very slight silence between the ending of Al-Fatiha and the uttering of Amin, so that it will not seem to others that Amin is part of Al-Fatiha. So the next second one is, when the person finishes, he says, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ Amin. So, Dalin. And your Amin, there was a little bit of silence in between that. The reason why he mentions that is because لِأَلَّا يُتَوَهَّمَ أَنَّ آمِينَ مِنَ الْفَاتِحَةِ So that the people don't think that the Amin is part of part of Fatiha. That is part of Fatiha. Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi narrated on the authority of who? Samurat ibn Jundub radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna hafidha an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as-saktatayni that he memorized from the Prophet ﷺ two sakta. The first one is the first sakta, which is the first silence. Sakta tan ida kabra. That the Prophet ﷺ used to be silent if he said Allahu Akbar. Wa sakta tan ida faraga min qiraati ghayri al-mandubi alayhi wa al-dalil. And the second one is the silence that he would come with after saying ghayri al-mandubi alayhi wa al-dalil. He would be silent alayhi salatu salam. Naam. The third is a long silence after Amin. So that those being led in prayer will be able to recite the Fatiha. The third one is after the Imam reads Amin, he's quiet. He's quiet for a period of time. He's quiet for a period of time. So he allows the ones who are praying behind him to read Surah Al Fatiha. Before he goes to the next Surah, he gives them a, a bit of time. So that they are able to pray Surah Al Fatiha. And the fourth pause comes after reciting the Surah after Al Fatiha in order to separate between the recitation and the Tabir for bowing. The fourth one is after he finishes Surah Al Fatiha and then he reads the Surah which he wanted to read and then he wants to go down for Ruku' just before he's going to going down just before he's going down for Ruku' he's, he's silent for a little bit. After finish the recitation before he says Allahu Akbar to ruku', to ruku', he is silent for a little bit. That's the fourth uh, time. That is the fourth time. The last two, the author didn't bring evi no evidence for it. The last two of the four, he has no evidence for it. He has only provided evidences for the first two. Fasrun fi ma'ani amin wa In this chapter, we're going to be speaking about amin and its hakam. The author says, وَيُسْتَحَبُّ لِكُلِّ قَارِئٍ فِي الصَّلَاةِ كَانَ أَوْ فِي غَيْرِهَا إِذَا فَرَغَ مِنَ الْفَاتِحَةِ أَنْ يَقُولَ آمِينَ وَالْأَحَادِيثُ الصَّحِيحَةُ فِي ذَلِكَ كَثِيرَةٌ مَشْهُورَةٌ وَقَدْ قَدَّمْنَا فِي الْفَصْلِ قَبْلَهُ أَنَّهُ يُسْتَحَبُّ أَنْ يَفْصِلَ بَيْنَ آخِرِ الْفَاتِحَةِ 
وبين آمين بسكتة لطيفة ومعناه اللهم استجب وقيل كذلك فليكن وقيل افعل وقيل معناه لا يقدر على هذا أحد سواك وقيل معناه لا تخيب رجاءنا وقيل معناه اللهم آمين اللهم آمنا بخير وقيل هو طابع الله هو طابع الله تعالى على عباده يدفع عنهم يدفع عنهم الآفات وقيل هي درجة في الجنة يستحقها قائلها وقيل هو اسم من أسماء الله تعالى وأنكر المحققون والجماهير هذا وقيل هو اسم إعب وهو اسم عبراني معرب وقال أبو بكر الوراق هي قوة للدعاء واستنزال الرحمة وقيل غير ذلك وفي آمين لغات قال العلماء أفصحها آمين بالمد والتخفيف المن والثانية بالقصر وهاتان لغتان مشهورتان والثالثة آمين بالإمالة مع المد حكاه حكاها الواحدي عن حمزة والكساء والرابعة بالتشديد الميم مع المد حكاها الواحدي عن الحسن والحسين بن الفضل قال وتحقيق ذلك ما روي عن جعفر الصادق رضي الله عنه قال معناه قاصدين نحوك وأنت أكرم من, أكرم من أن تخيب قاصدا هذا كلام الواحدي وهذه الرابعة غريبة جدا وقد عدها أكثر أكثر وقد عدها أكثر أهل اللغة في لحن العوام وقال جماعة من أصحابنا من قال في الصلاة بطلت صلاته قال أهل اللغة حقها في العربية الوقف لأنها بمنزلة الأصوات فإذا وصلها فت فإذا وصلها فتح النون لالتقاء الساكنين كما فتحت في أين وكيف ولم تكسر لثقل الكسرة بعد الياء فهذا مختصر ما يتعلق بلفظ آمين وقد, وقد بسطت القول فيها بالشواهد والزيادة الأقوال في كتاب في كتاب تهذيب الأسماء واللغات قال العلماء ويستحق التأمين في الصلاة للإمام والمأموم والمنفرد ويجهل الإمام والمنفرد بلفظ آمين في الصلاة الجهرية واختلفوا في جار المأموم في الصحيح أنه يجار والثاني لا يجار والثالث يجار إن كان جمعا كثيرا وإلا فلا ويكون تأمين المأموم مع تأميم الإمام لا قبله ولا بعده لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح إذا قال الإمام ولا الضالين فقولوا آمين فمن وافق تأمين تأمين الملائكة غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وما قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح إذا أمن الإمام فأمنوا فمعناه إذا أراد التأمين قال أصحابنا وليس في الصلاة موضع يستحب أن يقترن قول الماموم بقول الإمام إلا في قوله آمين وأما في الأقوال الباقية فيتأخر قول الماموم فصل في سجود التلاوة وهو مما يتأكد الاعتناء به فقد أجمع, فقد أجمع العلماء على الأمر بسجود التلاوة واختلفوا في أنه أمر استحباب أو أمر إيجاب واختلفوا في أنه أمر استجاب أو واختلفوا في أنه أمر استحباب أو إيجاب فقال, فقال الجماهير ليس بواجب بل هو مستحب وهذا قول عمر بن الخطاب وابن عباس وسلمان الفارسي وعمران بن الحسين ومالك والأوزاعي والشافعي وأحمد وإسحاق وبي ثور وداود وغيرهم رضي الله عنهم وقال أبو حنيفة رضي الله عنه هو واجب واحتج بقوله تعالى فما, ل فما لهم لا يؤمنون وإذا قرع عليهم القرآن لا يسجدون واحتج الجمهور بما صح عن عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه أنه قرأ يوم الجمعة على المنبر سورة النحل حتى إذا جاء السجد نزل فسجد, وس فسجد وسجد الناس حتى إذا كانت الجمعة القابلة ف حتى إذا كانت الجمعة القابلة 
قرا بها حتى اذا جاء السجده قال يا ايها الناس انما نمر بالسجود فمن سجد فقد اصاب ومن لم يسجد فلا اثم عليه ولم يسجد عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه رواه البخاري وهذا الفعل والقول من عمر رضي الله عنه في هذا المجمع دليل ظاهر واما الجواب عن الايه التي احتج بها ابو حنيفه رضي الله عنه فظاهر لان المراد ذم مع لا ترك السجود تكذيبا كما قال الله تعالى بعده بل الذين كفروا يكذبون وثبت في وثبت في الصحيحين عن زيد بن ثابت رضي الله عنه انه قرا على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والنجم فلم يسجد وثبت في الصحيحين انه صلى عليه الصلاه والسلام سجد انه صلى الله وسلم سجد في انه صلى الله عليه وسلم سجد في والنجم فدل على انه ليس بواجب